Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ram Revival. It is Saturday, we dropped like uh, 20 degrees. We're not 100 and something anymore, it's like 79 to 80-ish. But it's also ridiculously humid, so it comes, I guess, with the uh, grain of salt there. But, uh, we did 43.5, we built our PTFE line, we tested it, and then I'd pre already done a lot of other things. I don't exactly remember what part we are. Like, uh, 48, 49, 50, somewhere in there. And uh, what we need to do, now that we've tested it, is get this thing disassembled and install it. So, this is my old school, you know, Summit Dash 6 wrench. This is the adjustable one. And uh, when I was doing oil cooler lines for my Challenger, it just chewed it up. I think you can kind of see there, this should be purple. You know, like you see here, flat and smooth, and it's not. That's real, real rough. And subsequently, I started using, you know, pliers wrenches. The Knipex are great because you have the soft jaws. If you look at those, uh, it's really... <laughs> I think you can see the gashes in them. If you don't have that hex positioned perfectly, it starts to dig into that. I guess that's probably what happened here. Um, who knows? But, uh, I like to keep the fittings as decent looking as possible. And I'm a big fan of these. I've had some 7 inchers with extra soft jaws on order for a long time. The soft jaws have been the hold up, so I've been using the tins. But, I guess we'll do kind of like an impromptu tool haul here. I'll probably do like a standalone or something on these. But right here from ICT Billet, went ahead, I just bit the bullet. Um, the adjustables are very, very expensive. I feel like I'm moving towards using pliers wrenches for that. Uh, it's still kind of in the testing phases, you know. I'd love to have another one of these. They're stupid expensive. I'm talking like 60 bucks for like cheap ones. You know, you get like a better brand or one that's got like a different size range and you can spend a ton of money. There's also some really, really, really cheap ones and I just don't know if they're of any good quality or not. So I had good experiences with ICT Billet uh, when we bought the engine stand adapter, you know, specifically for Mopars. And uh, as you can see here, I just brought in a whole arsenal of <laughs> in wrenches so this one is three four six eight ten and twelve they are of course made in the USA the six is what I'm gonna need now some of these fittings that you start to mess with like that inline pressure gauge it's obviously it's not dash six right it's a little bigger that's where an adjustable or this comes in I will now actually have a dash eight and we can see if it's like half inch right so uh, again you could technically use standard wrenches on all of this you just risk marring the finish. You've got a much higher probability of doing so. But I'm going to get this thing dismantled and take it from there. You know what? I was so impressed with these, I just went ahead and made a tool haul. I'm glad I did because out of the bag, they look fantastic. So I made a standalone video on that if you want to see more of these. Granted, we didn't do much. Just sort of covered why I bought them, what they'll be doing for me in the future. Uh, be sure to check that one out. Now that said, I'm already super excited because I did not have a Dash 8. I was having to use the adjustable or the pliers wrench for that. And this little guy right here with our 8th inch NPT test port, yeah, guess what size he is? Mm hmm Dash 8. <laughs> so that means what we want to do is come up here so I can actually see what I'm doing. And that's kind of my setup right here. I'm just going to spin this guy loose. Boom. Gotta love that. No marring of the finish there. This again, dash six male, dash six female, mainly so we can accept the plug right there. And then eighth inch NPT test board. I picked up a fuel lab uh, fitting for that guy. So I've got this side free. Again, looks like that stayed intact. And then right here, we're gonna come in dash six. We'll go around, of course, the dash six. Now this, was it a dash six? can't remember. Nope, it's actually smaller. I've been using the pliers wrench, so the next smaller I have is a dash four. Oh, and it fits. This is already paying dividends, which is awesome. So I'm going to spin that guy. Perfect. Again, when you test these, my biggest tip for you, if you missed it from that video, tighten the ever-loving snot out of it. And, uh, you'll be home free. So now we're back to a point where everything you see is going to be dash six. But again, this fitting here for the Schrader valve, that was a dash four wrench. And then the test port eighth inch NPT, we got to use the dash eight. And of course the dash six was there for the entire shoe. So 
super happy with that purchase and uh, what I'm gonna do now we need to get this thing installed on the back of the truck so I'm gonna go ahead and do that because why I was super paranoid I didn't want this leaking that's why we shot water through it with pressure that's why we flushed it that's why we blew it out with air that's why we then put a pressure gauge on it and put it up to 75 psi several cycles we now know that this should not leak. If this leaks and there's fuel dripping and I don't catch it and it starts a fire and I can't put it out, I'll feel terrible, but I will at least know that I did everything I can to prevent that from happening. And again, that's that's the main goal. This is something a lot of people might just slop through. It's one thing, like on an old car where this is easily accessible, and I mean, I have lines leak all the time, you know, straight onto the manifold because you got a carburetor, right? But you see that, you see that, you can run your hand, you can pinpoint the leak, and you just tighten everything down, reflare it, whatever. With something like this, especially considering it's the first time, I want to take every precaution I possibly can to prevent something stupid like that from happening, especially again. Where, like on the Charger Industrial, you got your Holly up here, you've got your inlets, and you just lean over the fender, and you can monitor it. This is at the back of the block, and you're like, oh, you know, just lean in under the hood, buddy. Well, here's the problem, you know, here's the crossover line, and then my hand is the cowl, right? So this is like recessed behind the cowl. Total different format with the cab forward design. <laughs> so... I'm gonna go get this sucker on. I guess we will use these in tandem, our uh, Dash 6s here, and see how they do. So let's hop over there and get it done. Back to the truck, nonsense. Why? I need to show you something now. If you watch the KC tool hauls and stuff, you'll probably see this. Uh, if you watch any of them, you're familiar with this thing. It's a Ghidor L-Box Mini. I love these things. You can get them real cheap. I'm talking like 12, 15, somewhere in that range, if I'm thinking correctly. That said, what this one has, which I think I filmed this, don't hold me to that, this is all the test kit stuff, right? So this is my garden hose adapter. I left it connected to the Dash 6 just because that's what I was using. Uh, the port itself would be Dash 8. We've got a Dash 10 plug. We've got a Dash 8 plug. This right here would be a uh, Dash 8 to a Dash 10 expansion port. And what I want to do now is grab this, which that's my Dash 6 plug, right? So we're going to put it in place, and then I'm going to take the Schrader valve for the Dash 6 stuff. If we're going to do Dash 8 stuff, if that's what I wind up doing, I'm going to have to uh, get something else to test that with. But, got those in place. I've also got this uh, really nice Fuel Lab pressure gauge, so we will uh, call that good for this little test kit box. Speaking of ICT billet, that is that beautiful engine stand adapter in use right there, working great. Granted, I did polish it and have to custom drill it, but zero complaints. Where we're at now, right here, again, if you recall, it is quite difficult for me to get the tripod up tall enough to actually film this stuff good, but I got my two dash sixes. We're going to put A to B, basically take the PTFE line we made, go as you've seen it in the past, mocked up. And at that point, this thing is... Uh, really really close to getting dropped in so I'm gonna go ahead and call that good keeps being the weirdest crud go by on the streets like there was just a group of like 11 kids that just walked by themselves with no adults like down the street uh, now there's like two two people that look like they're not from around here on bikes but uh, yeah strange things when you have that uh, screen door down but I'm gonna quit around and get this crossover line on and uh, call it good all right, so jumping over here to the uh, makeshift workbench, we've got the factory 5.2 Magnum for an accessory bracket. Conveniently for us, same as a 5.9. I tried to leave all the hardware in place so I wouldn't like screw that up right. And then we've got the uh, pulley sitting here. Now, if you recall, I bought one from eBay and I was working on it. Spent a ton of time, bought you know a, a rotary tool just to try and get in all these crevices and clean it up. It looks way worse than this one. This one, if you recall, I'm wanting to put back on the 5.2 because that's a perfectly fine engine minus the water pump and freeze plugs. So, I was debating picking up a Scat Blaster Sandblast cabinet, right, where we left off. And uh, as fate would have it, I did this. Yep, that's that same eBay bracket, but it looks a heck of a lot better. <laughs> if you're thinking like, hey man, what did you do to that deal? Well, I decided... Uh, Again, I've got a lot I'm wanting to do, get the vehicles done. I got slowed down, you know, when you nearly lose your right thumb. And then, of course, the truck, you know, develops some issues. It sort of has to take precedence because it's 
you know, going to be used more frequently than the vehicles, you know, the, the Charger and the Duster, their little fun upgrades type of a deal, right? So, uh, working with that budget in mind and limited space constraints in the shop, I still want to get a blast cabinet. I kind of want to wait for a sale. I know they do them periodically. I got this thing powder coated and it came out really good in my opinion. So it's not just painted, you know, that's why it kind of looks a little bit, you know, thicker, glossier. It's actually powder coated, so it should last, hold up to the heat, hold up to the rigors of being on the front of an engine. <laughs> And uh, I'm very, very, very happy with the way this thing came out. So again, right there where your uh, AC compressor would sit, there's that little stud, I guess, for the factory air. Backside, whole thing came out fantastic. Again, that is the way to do it, in my opinion. I wasted so much time. If you added up the time I invested in, like, cleaning this thing, I probably wouldn't have been far off. I would have had a really, really nice down payment on a blast cabinet, but... Uh, I went ahead, just bit the bullet. I said, hey, you know, can you do this for me? Got it done. And, of course, I have no way of powder coating here at the moment, so that's an even better better perk for me. But what I want to do, I want to go figure out where I have put the alloy bolts, which I think I know, but I could be mistaken. It's either going to be the ones I bought for this or a 440. And if it's once for a 440, I don't know where I put them. <laughs> I have to dig around. But I want to mock this up on the front of the engine while it's out I don't know that I'm gonna put it in you know like have the bracket installed and drop it in I might it's all sort of up in the air right now but wanted to show that to you there's actually been like a couple of clips if there were ever like choppy moments in like recent parts of this it's because I had shown this on accident and didn't mean to so not that big of a deal it's nothing groundbreaking it's literally just blasted and powder coated came out phenomenal uh, if you want to do these in colors um, you could easily, easily do that. Like if you're going like old school Chrysler colors, or you want to do like Hemi orange or something, I think that would probably look pretty good, especially if it's like going in, you know, say instead of a second gen Ram, if you're retrofitting it back, you know, like ABE body, something like that. But enough talk. I'm going to get to trying to find the bolts, see if I can't figure out how this thing mounts up, and we'll get them on the front of the motor. All right, one of the things that has worried me, I know people love these. I do not. I am not in that camp. I don't like worm style clamps especially when they're inaccessible if this was an item like if this is on the side of a fuel line going to a carburetor not a big deal if it's leaking i can tighten it up this when you get that front bracket on is like inaccessible the problem i have i don't think i have another uh, coolant hose here uh, I mean, I've got this one here, the factory piece, and if you know it, I've got the constant tension clamps. I love constant tension clamps. They don't back off. They don't have problems like these do. Uh, the machine shop put this on, and of course, you know, they didn't have access to that because I had it here at the house, but I'm a little leery of it. I guess if it starts leaking, you know, maybe I can get to it. We'll see. At least I'm familiar with all the disassembly and stuff, but... We've got that. This is something else the machine shop did. Uh, they didn't have like the bolts or anything, so to keep this in place when we dynoed it, he just kind of threw this together for me, so I need to get this off. Luckily, uh, two things. Number one, I've got my little fan down here, which is way quieter than my box fan. <laughs> but also, we come over here to the cart. Man, I'm straddling this tripod, funky. Uh, if we come to my cart, that's actually where I have all the bolts over there. So very cool. I've grabbed a couple of wrenches and some sockets, and uh, we're ready to go to town on this thing. All right, so got uh, everything removed here. The water pump <laughs> or heater hose fitting, whatever it would be. Uh, that thing was not like sealed at all. It was just kind of held in place by that stud. So um, it looks like there's a place for an O-ring, but there's not. I went back and I looked at the one that I extracted from the factory 5.2. Sort of looks the same way, just worn down. Uh, so maybe it doesn't have an O-ring. I don't exactly know. But, uh, what I do know is I want to mock up the bracket, and what I can tell you, if you're like me, you know, you've had the truck dismantled for a long time, you've sat there and you have the air compressor, or the uh, AC compressor sitting on the passenger side, so your natural inclination might be to do this, you know, put the bracket like that, so you've got your air compressor, AC compressor here. That would be incorrect. If, you, if we think back many, many, many moons ago, we would need it to line up like that. Uh, air AC compressor was actually over here. Not sure why I keep saying air. Must be on my mind. But uh, we would need this portion over here, and then one-way telltale sign, your dipstick, 
which you conveniently cannot see. See this little bracket I sort of brought into view right there? That's a place for a bolt to go through. It's going to thread in here to the side. That's sort of how you can kind of foolproof that. So going by that, uh, this bracket would sit something like that, right? And you can kind of see those clamps I talk about just get buried farther and farther into oblivion. So I might play around and try to tweak that. The other thing I want to quickly try and cover, the bolts that I have in place, basically where this would thread in, we have four 3 8 by 2 inch. I swear I've made this diagram and documented it thoroughly and I cannot find it, which that's a problem. But this beautiful sketch that yours truly just did, right? Uh, number one right here, not, not the corner, but this pass through, that would be a 3 8 by 4 inch. Number two down here at the bottom, that should be this slot right there. That is going to be a 3 8 by 2. Number 3 is in the middle. That would actually be the idler pulley, which I think you can kind of make out right there. That thing is going to be a 3 8 by 2 inch. Number 4, which is going to be all the way over here, sort of the forward inside, if you will, that is a 3 8 by 2. Number 5, which is going to be, man, this is super awkward. <laughs> right there. That'll be a uh, 3 eighths by 2 and 3 quarter if my math is correct. And then 6 down here in the bottom, 3 eighths by 2. So essentially you've got number 1 is going to be this guy. That's a 4 inch bolt. It's going to be all the way through. You can see why, right? I think that kind of lines up with a stud um, boss in the head. Everything else is 2 inch with the exception of 5, which is also over here on its own free will, and then you can see it's a pretty long run it has as well. All of these bolts have a flat washer. Alloy bolts, our bolt kit supplier, included locks. When I dismantled everything, there were no locks, there was only flats. So I'm going to replicate what the factory did, and we will just pocket some cool stainless locks. But if you look, that looks to me, we've got four of the same, which would be two inch. Uh, the long one I'm hoping is four inch, and then this guy is going to be what I hope to be two and three quarter. So uh, we will tackle that. The way they describe this is accessory bracket to timing cover and block. Uh, block likely also meaning head. So uh, assuming they are 3 8 we'll need 9 16 Again, some of these fasteners were like hit and miss, mixed midge moreau whatever you want to call it so 14 millimeter might sub in for you but uh yeah i'm gonna just mock this thing up see if i can if i can make it to where we have a window uh, window to access these clamps that would be awesome but i gotta get this tripod out in front of me it makes things super awkward and I'd really like another roll cart right about now. Now I've unboxed or un unpacked that little piece right here, which again, accessory bracket to timing cover and block. So just to confirm, you know, they check out to be three eighths. We get that little lock down or flat, I should say. There's our four inch. Again, there's our three eighth slot. Really nice fit. The two and three quarter, which is the one you would worry about because that is a very strange length for a bolt, checks out just fine. The thing that worries me, everything else, the four other bolts were two inches, right? If you look at what they sent me, you know, it's like, well, they're, they're all the same size. And taking the flat washer off just to confirm, it clocks in at an inch and a half. Not sure how well that's showing up, but this is two inch where my thumb's at. So we'll have to mock them up and see. Uh, pet peeve of mine, there is a top and a bottom to a washer. There's like a flat side and sort of like a, a curved side. And it's going to be polished on the pretty side, right? Do, do good. Do the right thing. Don't drive people crazy that know or care. <laughs> Just do it proper. Uh, will the lock washer make up any difference? Yes, but not a half of an inch. So I'm not 100% sure there. Maybe they've got it in another bag. Um, maybe it'll work just fine. Who knows? But that is a little bit concerning. Uh, you know, if it's like a quarter of an inch, yeah, maybe not. But in half an inch, you kind of start to start to second guess things. So I'm going to try to see how that goes down. And uh, we'll take it from there. All right. So this is why you test fit things, kids. It's uh, little, little issues you can discover before it's in the truck. And it's a pain in the butt to figure out. So... 
These are the stainless bolts and washers from Alloy Bolts. We've got them all mocked up. I believe that was the 4 inch and this was the 2 and 3 quarter. Everything else you see is 2 inch. The one missing is the one in the middle. Uh, granted, the 2 inchers in their case, you know, are a little short, but tail of the tape, you come in, and this is super awkward, but we've at least got threads coming out the back side, right? It's, I know it's hard to see, but trust me, they do all clear. Now, situation being, I would like to just go ahead and mock up the idler pulley too, right? So that's going to sit like that, and then we come in with our 3 8 by 2 and if you can't see the problem, let me just sort of show you. You see that? That's that's not good. That washer is almost the inside diameter of our bearing. Uh, this, to its credit, spins pretty nice. Uh, this is something I bought a long time ago from Rock Auto. Don't know if we ever made a video on it, but it's Gates 38033. And I don't know that that's going to work. So, if I bring you down here to... Uh, this guy, our factory bracket, you see that really, really gnarly big looking washer? And I don't mean this little flat. So I'm going to spin this off slowly, slowly but surely. And the whole thing's coming. So we're going to set that down. Why am I putting this back? Just because I could be an idiot and forget where it goes. So here is the factory 5.2 idler pulley, right? Looks very similar, but it's got that that big beautiful washer that makes a 3 8 bolt with a flat fit now it could just have like adhered over time but i'm i'm pretty confident that's a that's a one piece deal there so i'm gonna play with that maybe i don't know maybe it's just like melded itself together but it looks like it's got a sleeve that goes down in there so maybe we can knock her out the problem is if i do that i'm gonna need one for this because again the 5.2 is fine minus the water pump and the freeze plug so uh, I'll if I use this on the 5.9 the 408 I'll have to find it again to use on the 5.2 so it's one of those weird situations but uh, I'll play around with it and see if maybe we can drive it out or something a couple of pulls and boom that's what we've got so now now do you see similarities between these right Probably a slightly better bearing in the factory piece, but if I mate these up, it's a good, quick, easy way to match your ODs. Make sure you don't have like a tragically wrong part number. So one would assume, you know, when you get the idler pulley with the bearing, you, you'd kind of think that like, you know, this, this might be with it, right? Um, but it's not. So quick test fit. Looks like I can probably uh, actually just dropped in right there. So that's good i'm going to clean this up a little bit why because we can right now so save the boat there but again i'm now going to have to figure out how you get this like machined washer insert for an idler pulley so we can have it for the 5.2 <laughs> but uh yeah that's what you run into that's why i film this that way instead of you run into this crud you might know ahead of time and it'll save you some trouble so i would have loved to have known about this i could have tackled it months ago but uh, it is what it is, and that should make it to where we can then thread this in beautifully. Because again, check that out. That's the way you want it. So if I can't find one of these, I mean, granted, if there's like a good pick a yard, I would, I would be harvesting a lot of stuff for magnums right now. I'm going to tell you that right now. But uh, this is something I could actually, you know, turn down at work if I had to. It's just, it's easier to just have it, and you would think it would come, but it did not. So... Good news is it is something you can extract and reuse. So I'll get it cleaned up and then we will kind of have this thing mocked up. Can't tell you how bad I'd like to have just a little lathe here at the house. I don't need anything, but people would hate it. People on YouTube are very, very mean when you get like a tiny little lathe, but they come in super handy for stuff like this. This isn't like a super critical part. The main thing would just be the OD right there where we would have it slide down the ID of the... Uh, you know bearing but in the event that anyone finds themselves in this position you have to make one or need one you're looking just the specs right here and then the little step down isn't critical if you wanted it to be super sweet you could just take whatever 3 8 flat you have if you use the factory it's going to be a little thicker than probably like just one of the mill stuff and then we're sitting about that thickness and then our overall So kind of funky measurements anytime I don't see anything that's like 
you know translates to fractional I just kind of hit the metric button that's the cool thing about these and it doesn't really match up super well either but uh, in the event that you're you're that type of guy and you want to go metric there you go so the thickness I think is the last thing we need but again this would not be as long as you get the stem correctly to drop down inside the idler you're gonna be fine you know as if it does that and it creates a space where you can run the bolt basically all we're doing is keeping this bolt and this washer from dropping through there like that that would be terrible this is just a glorified washer and uh, smartly they have it also drop down in there for support so there we go uh, I need to get these back to work and just bring some six inches home. Every once in a while you need something bigger than six, but not usually. And I do keep plastic little veneer calipers around. It's not because they were just cheap, it's because it's good for painted surfaces. You don't want to run these on something painted, so keep that in mind. But I'm going to, I guess, sadly put that in and just hope I can find one for the idler for the 5.2 now. So I would have assumed that washer would have been a part of the mix, but I guess the logic from the supplier is you're just replacing it on your vehicle, you're going to pull it out. So, could go either way, but uh, that said, we've kind of covered the rough dimensions in the event that you have to run down to a parts store and try to explain this, or you have a buddy that can make one, but he needs rough dimensions. Should get you going as long as you've got the idler pulley. You can just come in, he could get the uh, ID there and machine it out that way too. So, uh, with that said, I'm going to mock that up so we'll have a good idea of what this will look like all stainless and powder coated. Alright, so coming back to the motor, I really, really wish I had another bypass hose here. The thing is, I could try to pull that off, you know, at least even one side, so I could get the constant tension clamps on. I feel like I would tear it up. Uh, those hoses, particularly when you got like barbed fittings, which both of those are, it doesn't usually result positively. So I busted out uh, something you don't see me use a lot, but the... Uh, upgraded nut drivers from Viha. I've tightened the ever-living snot out of these things because I don't trust them. They always leak. It may not be now, it may not be in a week, but they will always leak. I do not like them. It's just a matter of time. They're essentially a ticking time bomb. Also, I was running into some interference and I don't know if it's because of the changed outlet position or like if these were catching the bracket, but I've moved all the junk out of the way and I'm going to try to mock the bracket up. So. I also have the option, this is a factory water neck, I've got a really nice billet one from Hughes and I'm debating whether or not to put it because I don't know about the, the radiator hose if it's going to mesh up or not. We're not, it's a Mitotoyo, not Mitotoyo, Mishimoto, <laughs> I've got machining on my mind, uh, radiator that we brought in. But it's OE spec, so I would think we would be fine, but I just don't know for sure. And uh, like I said, none of this may even go on here. I may just drop the motor in as is. But I like to kind of go through my thought process here, try to find issues when they're easy to fix, i.e. the motor's here and not in there. So uh, I'll play around with it and see what I come up with. All right, so this is why you mock things up. And I started in, I went down here to the bottom corner, which gets really awkward with the tripod here to do this stuff but had that in had it routed to the head and then nothing over here lined up started over here and you can't get this side even remotely close and when you kind of get it in position like this it's like way off like terribly terribly off and what I think the issue is if you note the bracket it's it's hard for you to tell but it's like tilted this way towards the camera it should be back you know towards the intake manifold and what I think is causing the issues is the hose clamps which uh, that's a, that's the one way to get me back to the constant tension ones right but um, it just it seems to be that's the contact point and I'm thinking it's that guy at the top which I think you can sort of see him now so I'm gonna have to sadly try to relocate it um, I'm trying my best to keep this to where I can hit this to tighten that back down. Uh, so I'm just going to play around and see if maybe I can find a sweet spot for everything.
Oh yeah, just simply loosening that gear clamp and uh, spinning it down to the side got this thing to drop right in. For a second I was thinking, man, I wonder if this thing is tweaked or bent or something. Buying something off eBay, I mean, you have no idea. But uh, everything's lined up. I'm trying to remember though, I pulled the idler pulley off, but I feel like there is a bolt there. Obviously it wouldn't have been included in this kit either. I'm thinking a lot of people might overlook it. I remember, I think when we pulled this off it wasn't wasn't coming and that was what was missing. I had to pull the idler pulley and find that guy. <laughs> so I currently don't have it in that bracket either, but I feel like there's a there's a machined boss behind it that would take one. Now in the event that this were to, uh, obviously we don't have this tightened down, but it's like in place where it should be right, so you kind of get like the, the fitment issues. This is sort of accessible. I mean, I could fit, let me just grab the nut driver. I know we could get a slotted in there and kind of cheese it. That would actually work. I can get the VHA in there to tighten it. Now, this one that I took completely free, man, if they would have just just design that a little differently and you could get the clamp right there that would be great but as is it's closed off from this side um, there's not a right angle clamp you can kind of see it dangling back there I think that would have been awesome if they make a right angle one of these stupid things okay if I'm patient enough I realize you don't really see in there I'm not gonna go grab a light you can see the, the the band clamp I mean you know what it looks like it's the bright color it's not black if I position that stupid thing right I think there is a slight chance we'd probably have to run an extension but if I had a 5 16 socket maybe like a 12 inch extension I think we could reach that stupid thing again I'm really tempted to put my constant tensions back on there, but maybe we can swing this. My, my fear is we tear the hose up when we try to take it off because of that barbed fitting. I did the finger test, it goes way down that way. Uh, the longer the barb extension, the more likely you are to tear the hose up. Granted, it's relatively fresh, but I just I still have a bad feeling and I don't have a spare one here. So maybe I can work some magic here. I'll. Uh, get to work and see what I can do. All right, so I've done a couple of things here. Number one, I've loosened this completely, and sadly, in order for me to get it to where we could tighten it from this side with an extension, which I was mocking up, as you can see, it's backwards right now. I would need the head of the fastener to actually point this direction towards the dipstick. So I've got that to contend with, making me think I might wind up just pulling the hose or attempting to, if I junk it, I junk it. Uh, I also spent some time looking for this, and I finally found it. Uh, this is something I was on back order for a long time and finally came in. And uh, what it is, if you can't tell, it is a beautiful piece of billet. It is a thermostat housing. <laughs> and uh, Basically, instead of having that stamped long neck from the factory, we'd have this really trick-looking piece. My thing is, and my hesitancy, again, I don't know... You know, like, is my radiator hose going to have enough slack to come down this far? And I honestly don't know. I'm kind of hesitant to install this because of that. Um, it's something we could easily do, you know, with the motor in the truck. So that's kind of the logic I'm keeping. The other thing I did that I'm really proud of, I thought in my head, I said, Hey, man, didn't I, didn't I just read something about a, an idler pulley? And I did. <laughs> and, uh, right here, accessory bracket to idler pulley. So alloy has this covered. That will allow me to run this guy to this provision for the pulley. And that means this one right here that I had going through the pulley is going to go here and then run into threads. So, uh, that again, that didn't nest quite like the factory one with all the years of constant turmoil. But that would go there. That would complete that. And then this would take the place of that and thread the idler pulley to the accessory bracket. So pretty glad that I thought back and said, man, you know, I think I remember them having that in a separate bag. So I very well might tear this up. I kind of, I was thinking about it and I thought, you know, I think I'm just going to have the accessory bracket on when I put it in the motor. It makes sense, you know, put it in the truck, I should say. Uh, this would be the only holdup. I think what I'm going to do is see if I can get this off. If it falls apart, 
so be it. You know, I'll order one in and just wait. Something I can do in the truck, I guess, and put the bracket on at that point. But uh, I just kind of need to see because I just I hate these clamps. And uh, even to get this oriented correctly, where at least that way, if it leaked, I had access to this one. Might have to move the uh, AC compressor. I'm not sure. That's not a big deal. But this one, if I could get to it from that side, which granted in the truck it would be a little weird, but I had it to where, I mean, we were coming in and that bracket sat here and I could just run that 12-inch extension in beautifully. So I'm going to see if we can get that off and that will likely dictate a lot of what I do next. You know, sometimes I worry about myself. Had the big, long, nasty hose pick tools over here. I was ready to go to town, see if I get this off. Wasn't making good progress. And then I realized, I'm like, hey man, that's a, that's a gear worm clamp. I could probably take that all the way apart, put it back together, flip it, and have the access point where I want it. <laughs> and, uh, that's so much easier. Uh, the other thing I can tell you is it does not looking good in terms of me getting this off intact since I don't have a spare sitting here aside from the factory one that I don't want to reuse. I think I'm just going to run with the stupid gear worm clamps. If it's a point of contention later where they're constantly leaking, I have somewhat accessibility to these. I'll showcase that when I get the bracket on. But my main thing, I want the motor in. Uh, this weekend and uh, this would be something stupid to hold me up so I'm gonna position these as best I can for accessibility I'm gonna get the bracket on that will be done I kind of am hesitant to do the billet thermostat housing just because again you know if it's a replica of the factory hose which it should be you know that would be my stop point I don't think I'm gonna come that extra you know two three inches that I would need so uh, we'll figure it all out, but uh, I think this is going to be the ticket here. I've already gone ahead and flipped this, so very simple. <laughs> was making it way more complicated, but I do, for the record, not a fan of these clamps. I don't like them at all, but we'll give them a shot and see what happens. All right, so this thing is not tightened down at all. I've just got two bolts holding it in, despite the others being there looking like they're doing something. What I want to highlight is right here. Uh, especially when that stands up like it should that's going to be accessible kind of I mean it's all it all gets buried once you have you know the alternator and the compressor and the fan shroud and everything but it's at least to a point if I take everything down to that I should be able to access that to tighten it now coming in over here this is the important part I want to show you I forgot to grab a light for you I see it just fine I think you do too since I zoomed in there so right here that silver thing is the clamp that's the head because we flipped it this is a vera locking extension this is important the nut driver probably not going to get in there again this is 5 16 on this particular clamp you actually could possibly do that but again with an alternator right here it ain't happening I'm just going to go ahead and bluntly tell you the truth so this would be awesome because you do not want to lose a socket in there. You'd spend forever fishing it out with a magnet. But this is a locking extension. It would be great if I put it in here. I think it's like a 6 inch. It's kind of right about here where you would have accessibility to this. Again, with the alternator out of the way. The longest extension that I currently have access to that I'm thinking of is a 3H drive. So since the current socket set didn't have a 5 16 socket, I've put an adapter on it. And what I'm going to do now is turn this free from my Vera extension. I'm going to stab this on, and I'm just going to simulate this for you to show that there is a method to the madness. We're going to pull this back a little. I think you can still kind of see it, but this is what I was talking about. This point right here, I think where that's the long 4-inch bolt goes into the head. Check this out. If you use that, I'm making sure I've got the position good. This you might be able to do... I think the tensioner would be over here maybe there's crud gonna be in the way but this is like the closest we could hope to get and as you can see I'm actually turning the clamp so I'm gonna use this point to actually tighten the snot out of that I'm gonna pull the bracket back off tighten it down uh, this has kind of got it at the position I want where again I can rest this on that bracket and have access to the fasteners so 
Even though I don't like them, I'm trying to make this to where if they do leak and I want to tighten it, I might be able to get to it with the least amount of work. So that's kind of the end goal. <laughs> so yeah, if you do the same thing or if yours is always leaking or you're a fan of those clamps or you can't, the problem with constant tension clamps, you can't find them in the sizes you need. If you don't have one that you've taken off, like good luck getting one. I've tried and tried and it never, you order stuff that you think is going to fit based on their specs and then it doesn't. It's just a, it's a stupid situation and it's a great clamp. I don't know why people hate them. They say they leak. They need to look at the other components involved in the leak before they accuse the constant tension clamp because if you've got a leak, it's usually related to a gear worm clamp. So it's just, I guess there's two different schools there. I'm of the one that says they're superior so nonetheless we're going to try to make do with this and again this seems overkill but i assure you if you're doing this your truck is constantly having leaks here from that hose and you know what it is and you've got the clamps there think and try to make it easier for yourself to get everything corrected so i'm going to tighten this stuff down and we'll probably button it up all right so this thing is looking pretty good we have access here we've got access with long extension currently i'm sure air compressor or AC compressor, man, I'm still doing that. <laughs> Alternator. Everything is going to complicate it, but at least at this stage, you know, the bracket could potentially stay on and we could still access the uh, gear worm clamp. So, torquing everything down to 30 foot pounds and uh, just going to go to town here with the old Ghidorah. Sweet. Love that click. We're just going to hop around, hit all of these again. We will have one two, three, which is under the idler pulley. Then we've got four, five, and six. So those are the six bolts that we've got. Apparently there's a mower firing up, which means I've got a motor here uncovered. I need to uh, get my screen door up, so that's great. <laughs> so I'll get these torqued and call it a day. All right, so the point of contention now, I wanted to go ahead, I threw some RTV around the uh, water pump tube, kind of coming off right here and the bolt did not want to catch. This one does fine because this is one of the factory bolts that is 3 8 by 2 inch. It's also a tap bolt, meaning it's got thread all the way. This guy here, again, inch and a half, which that's a half inch shorter, so with that extra little distance that the bracket gives, like we're barely touching down, and I just, you can see the issue there, it's not happening, so um, 3 8 by 2 inch, obviously I could put this bolt in, I'm going to hold it up where you can see it, but I'd sort of prefer having stainless, right? So, uh, that's my hold up here. Might go ahead and kind of install it maybe loosely with this one and then just swap it, you know, because I'll have to hop in the front of the truck to do some stuff anyway, so uh, could potentially throw this guy in to replace this one. But uh, that's a lost cause. I would also not do 30. I could not find the torque specs. We went with 30. I wouldn't really advise that. I would I would back this stuff off and treat it delicately. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's what we'll be doing. But again, this guy will work. And again, that's what we should have had replicated was 2 inch on all of these. The four bolts that you saw that were inch and a half realistically should have been 2 inch. So uh, maybe I've got some 3 8 by 2 stainless sitting around. I'm not sure if I do. I'll put it in and we'll call it good. Well, I'm uh, trying not to get NICs on the camera, but let me let me show you what I've got. I have this for a specific reason. I don't remember what, so it's going to get sacrificed here for the greater good. But this is the factory bolt. Again, tap bolt, 3 8 by 2 inch thread all the way. Shoulder on this one in the middle, that's my 3 8 by 2. This is the uh, 3 8 by inch and a half that uh, alloy bolts in us. So I'm going to set that down because it doesn't have gunk on it. I'm going to grab this flat. I'm going to set that head down because it's clean. I'm going to slide this over. I, if you, I don't think I mentioned, but anytime I do stuff like this, I like to run marine grade NIC. So I'm going to slather up the end, slide that in, re RTV that, and we should be done with putting the front accessory bracket on. All right, RTV is applied. We're going to slide this in ever so delicately. I'm kind of concerned with how easy this comes in and out. The O-ring is there. Man, that RTV placement was perfect. Granted, it's the second time I've done this now, but you want to go a little bit above the O-ring. If you go too high, you know, this won't let you seat it because of where it's going to catch with the bolt. Man, that's like picture perfect. 
So uh, now I can come in, hand tighten it always, always. I have my marine grade anti-seize on there. Uh, now I've just got to clean my hands up, tighten this down again. I don't know the torque specs. I would not do 30 foot-pounds. Nothing here is critical. You're simply kind of securing the bracket. Obviously you want it tight, but you don't need to like torque it to heck and back, you know. So I don't know, maybe 20, 20 foot-pounds or so. It worked out well because the Ghidorah bottoms out at 30. But uh, I'd probably just do it hand and then just put a little, you know, quarter to half turn with a ratchet on it. So uh, that's my advice. But uh, again, a sacrifice one of mine, but it blends in and it is stainless. So the whole front end accessory, I'm trying to get to where you can appreciate this, <laughs> is now complete. It looks really good in my opinion. We covered up the hose. We have access to this. We have access to that. We got our crossover there in the back. I think you can see that again. Uh, my primary objective now is to get the NICs and RTV off my hands so I can then tighten this down and uh, not not gunk up the Hazette ratchet more than I have to. So Beautiful. Again, powder coated the front eBay accessory bracket. We've got the line tested. We've got it installed, tightened down. Position the gear worm clamps where we can hopefully tighten them should we have any leaks. I think we're doing pretty good, so we're going to come back kind of in an unexpected video. I've just got something I really want to do before the motor is in the truck. It's kind of pointless, but at the same time, uh, makes for a uh, great photo opportunity. So that's your spoiler alert. That said, LoneStarMopars.com is a website. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all three at Lone Star Mopars. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts. Hopefully this helps you out. Again, if you go with alloy bolts, uh, they send one and a half inch for your four main bracket bolts. The two and three quarter over here was correct. The four inch over here to the head was correct. Uh, my factory stuff was two inch. The stuff they sent one, two, uh, three, and four. Those were inch and a half, and what I pulled out was two inch. What I've put back in here because it would not catch with that uh, just, I mean, minusculely thick bracket is two inch so probably want to go two inch if you do that but uh, definitively now instead of just being 14 millimeter i can say it should be nine sixteenths because that's that's what i put here so <laughs> but, uh, wednesdays we try to have automotive content saturdays we try to do cool tool content that i hope is cool but uh i'll quit rambling i've got a uh, like i said kind of something i want to knock out here while the motor's out of the truck and uh, then we'll hopefully be sticking this thing in. I'd preview the gantry crane for you, but again, I got crud all over my hands and I try not to touch the camera when I do. So, uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you have yourself a great rest of the week. I'll catch you back here for more from the Ram Revival.